Good morning, my gorgeous little crumpets. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Fighting fit and raring to go. The sun has disappeared. <laughs> it's only a temporary thing, but we have complete cloud cover today. So there's still a good bit of brightness out there for me to enjoy. It does mean the temperature's dropped by about, I don't know, three or four degrees. So I think I'm going to be keeping my hoodie on today. <sighs> but it's just, it's just perfect at the moment. You know, I was thinking about this um, a couple of nights ago, chatting with a friend. This winter has been such a good winter for us in so many ways for being out in the garden. Pretty much the whole of December and January were dry. I can't actually remember any sort of planned day in the garden getting rained off at all. Really dry, pretty mild. We had that couple of days of frost right at the end of January, just going into February. And then going into February we had, I don't know in the end, it's like eight or nine days of on and off rain and sleet. The snow never came to anything. But generally speaking, it's been mild and dry. It's been perfect for just getting on with the jobs out there. And I know there's loads of you who, you know, got your new plots last year, maybe sort of like May, June or so. You got things going last summer and autumn, but then you've been working really hard this winter to get the rest of your plot either dug over or your beds built. Um, I know there are some of you who've built sheds over this winter, so yay, good on you for making the most of it. Of course, I'm only referencing the southeast of England. <laughs> I know up north there has been snow. My sister has sent me photographs. <laughs> she lives right on the edge of the North York Moors, on the north side of the North York Moors. So, like I say, I'm only referencing the southeast, but down here we've been really really lucky this winter with the amount of time we can spend outside in the garden because it's been dry it's been perfect for digging and creating new beds we did have a load of rain in October and November that's lovely because it's kind of softened things up a bit for them to do some more rejigging in December and January the only downside to having a mild winter is of course, that we could really have done at some point with a really hard, deep frost for a few days to kill off any slug and snail eggs that are in the ground. Now, just on the subject of eggs, just to follow on from that last video when I was showing you my beans which were all hatching, Woo! they're so hideous. First things first, um, <laughs> please don't, ah, before I even say that, I've got a couple of thank yous to say to Joanne and to Jo, two Js, both of whom have sent me um, some seeds in the last couple of days, and thank you so much because they're ones where I can plug some gaps in my collection. So some Red Rubens lettuce, yay, and um, some spring onions to try between the rows of carrots. So I'm going to do a row of the leeks a la Alice Fowler and then I'm going to do a row of spring onions. So thank you both, lovely ladies, both from the northwest. Come on the northwest. Um, brilliant. So back to my bean seed that I was showing the other day with the hatchings of the weevils. Ugh. Now, First things first, I've got loads and loads of seed that that hasn't happened to. So I'm fine for seed thank you because I've had a few private messages of you lovely, lovely people offering to send me some of your spare seed. Thank you so much to everyone for offering, but I'm okay. I've got more than enough seed to plant. Because I keep so many dried beans for eating, I've always kind of got that kind of reserve of I've got beans for eating, beans for sowing. I'll always prioritise sowing because if I've only got 10 seeds or 10 dried beans left, I think to myself, well, yes, I could eat them, that's half a meal, or I could sow them and hopefully create 
loads and loads of meals. So I've got plenty, plenty, plenty of seed left. Thank you very much for offering. Um, and as I was mentioning the other day about the beans that I keep for eating, I do always freeze them for 24 hours to stop that whole hatching process happening. What I wasn't sure about when I was talking about it the other day is whether I could freeze my seed and it would still be viable. So I was kind of thinking aloud in that video and, and having then sort of shut up and got on with some gardening I was thinking some more and then also your comments prompted more thinking and I was thinking actually of course that whole problem with the mushy veg is because of the water content when we freeze them so for example actually this might be a fun experiment for you to do with your kids grandchildren whatever is if you think about if you took a chunk of cucumber and froze it and a chunk of carrot and froze it and then you defrosted them what would you be left with well the cucumber because it's such a massively high water content I think it's something like 95% water it would be at absolute mush, it'd be wrecked. The carrot would survive a bit better because it's got less water content. Give it a go with your kids. So then I was thinking, well, actually, if my seed, if my seed, my dried seed that I'm saving for sowing as opposed to eating, I'm trying to be clear here, if, if that's bone dry when it goes into the freezer, well then surely there's not enough water in there for ice crystals to form and do that cell with rupturing that I was talking about the other day. So I was more and more thinking about it, I was thinking, yeah, that, that must be possible. And also thinking about seed collections, and thank you, Benny, and a couple of others. Yes, I, I knew it was somewhere up in the north, it's Norway. It's on the island of Svalbard, that there's this huge 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 seed collection um, that's kept frozen so hang on a tick <laughs> talking so much already so my thoughts are pinging all over the place here so I'd already decided that I might do an experiment of I've got a few spare bean seeds that I'm going to freeze them now and then thaw them and sow them to see what happens. I'll do them in pots separate from the others so I can, you know, properly see what's happening with them. But then somebody sent me a link yesterday. Um, oh, I've forgotten who sent it. Is it Fiona? Oh, I can't remember, sorry. Anyway, I was sent a link yesterday to a video by the Kawanga Institute, who I really, really like. Now, if you don't know the Kawanga Institute, I'm going to put a couple of links below, one to their website and one to this seed bank video of theirs. Um, they're based in New Zealand and they have, over the years, they've been building a heritage seed library, if you like, library, of food seeds from New Zealand. And what's been wonderful is that over the years, people just randomly here and there who happen to have a really old variety of something that they've been growing for years maybe seed was given to them by their parents grandparents even longer ago than that folk have been sending their seed to the Koanga Institute where they are able to grow things on and develop a larger collection of seeds of all these wonderful, weird and wonderful, old-fashioned seeds that aren't available commercially, that were maybe some of them were thought to be lost forever. So they're doing an amazing, amazing job uh, down there in New Zealand. Like I said, I'll, I'll put the link into their website. Have a look. It's fascinating stuff. Um, I love it. I know, you know, there's a part of me that thinks, hmm, Maybe I should move to New Zealand. I'd quite like to work for the Kawanga Institute. Anyway, um, the link that was sent to me uh, is a great little video of their seed bank and how they process their seeds, how they look after them, how they sort them and store them, how they sort of keep a reserve just in case something goes wrong with the ones they are growing, how they're developing enough now that they can actually sell seed to folk. But the main point was 
right at the beginning of this particular video, uh, the lady was talking about how once they've gathered the seed, the seed has been dried thoroughly, then it's been sorted so all the chaff chucked out. Then all their seeds get a three day freeze. And exactly she says in the video, they get a three day freeze to sort out any problems with bugs. So I thought, do you know what? <laughs> if it's good enough for the Koanga Institute, it's more than good enough for me. So that I've really, really taken that on board. So this autumn when I'm collecting my bean seeds, whether I'm keeping them, I'll dry them as I always do, but whether I'm keeping them for consumption or for re-sowing next year, they're all gonna get a blast in the freezer. I'll have to find space though, won't I? Because normally in the autumn, that's when my freezer is at its busiest. Anyway, I found it really interesting. I find their work fascinating anyway. So pop over, have a look at what they're up to. And that might give you some ideas for your own seed saving. And also in terms of seed swapping, because I know we're all mad keen seed swappers, which is great. Um, and I think it's worth within your own country just getting in touch with various organisations. If you're growing something that you've been growing for years and years, and maybe you have the seed from your parents or your grandparents or, you know, some old lady in the village gave you a handful of seeds a few years ago, check out with your national organisations. See if it's something that's missing from their collection. You never know. You might just be saving a heritage seed by doing so. Right. It's time to crack it onto things, into things, onto things, were in the garden. It does feel considerably chillier today. Let me just look at the thermometer. My thermometer in the shed says 14 degrees centigrade, which is 58 Fahrenheit. Um, but yeah, it does feel considerably cooler. I think it's just because the sun's missing. So today, uh, more pruning. I'm going to attack the sage and the rosemary because they're really out of control at the moment. I'm going to give them a really hard going over, as I do this time every year. Um, there's a few other bits and bobs of just taking out last year's dead stuff, making room for New Year's growth. I'm going to do a bit more leaf strimming to get my brassica beds covered. Ah, and the other thing I'll show you when we pop out of the door. Um, yesterday I was here to do some harvesting and a, and a little bit of tidying up. And I took, on, took all my Brussels plants out because they're, you know, pretty much done with. But then I got a phone call and I had to leave before I had time to get everything harvested. So I just left them in a bucket of water yesterday. So I need to, to keep them fresh. I need to get those harvested today too. So without further ado, let's get into the garden and see what mischief we can get into today. Good morning, Rosie. How are you today? Rosie? Oh, little special girl on guard. Right, so yesterday, oh, creaky bones, creaky bones. I'd harvested my brussels and I was going to use my bin liner to wrap them in to take them home so I could deal with them. And then I thought, actually, no, probably if I leave them here, it'd be better because it would be cooler here than at home and um, and then when I've got a bit more time today ooh, I'm just trying to find you you can see in there there's the last few to harvest so I'll harvest any of the last little bits of sprouts not much now they didn't really come to much of anything at all uh, but there are a few some of them have blown a bit like that but I'll still scoff them but actually this little bunch here, yeah, they look gorgeous. So I'm at a really weird angle with my body. Yeah, they look yum, <laughs> and they look like peas. <laughs> so yeah, I'll get those harvested. I'll take the leaves as well. And then what I've been doing with my other cabbages as I've been having them, this is all the stalks. They're too chunky to go into the compost. So what I need to do is get my mallet out and smash them smash them and bash them and um, that will help them to break down for the compost 
some of the leaves have been had, but most of them will be yummy and good. And then later on for my supper, I'll probably all I'll do with them is just lightly steam them for five or six minutes. I'll probably halve them, I might even quarter them, yeah. Lightly steam them and then just quickly fry them off in a bit of oil and garlic. Oh, yum. Oh, I shouldn't think about food when I've just got to the plot because it makes me want to race home and scoff. Right, let's get into the garden and do the work first. So as you can probably tell, both the rosemary and the sage have become absolute monsters. I'll just show you around the side too. Where's my path? Ah, oh, it's covered in rosemary and sage. So I am going to give them a really, really hard cut back today. Um, the problem with any of these plants is they do get woody in the centre. So if you cut back into the woody bits, you are in danger of of it um, of it not coming back. But what I'll do is, so for instance, on this one, you see it's woody, 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 woody. It's still quite woody there, but where I've got this new growth here, I'm going to cut back really hard. So I'm going to lose all of that. But I will be harvesting what I cut off. With the rosemary, this bit that's kind of flopped right over here, I'm probably going to cut that right back to leave a bit more space for the flowers that are in this end because it's not like I don't have plenty more rosemary to keep me happy. Oh, when the sun's trying to peek out. Right, I've got my seat ready, I've got my snippers ready. Let's do some work. just going to start underneath the rosemary with the sage. Now like I say this may look like I'm going to be really really severe but it just it grows so rampantly it is rather a monster. So to start with well I can barely see anything so I'm just going to start with these top bits now that looks really really woody doesn't it and it looks like oh don't cut back that far but this bit in the plant down there I've got a nice cluster of new growth so all of this I could do one of two things I could either just hang bunches at home to dry I wouldn't do it in the shed at the moment because the shed isn't warm enough um, but there's going to be so much that I think rather than hanging bunches what I'll do is I'll just strip all the leaves off and um, and lay them out on mesh mesh racks to dry and then eventually once it's all dry actually just let me show you this bit as well as you're attacking and doing your pruning you will get some pieces like this where it's just you know it's dead as a dodo that can go in the compost. Yeah, sorry, so the, the bits that, uh, the leaves, once they're dry, just store in an airtight container, and I will use the sage primarily for tea. I gave a load of it last year to a friend of mine who had had a hysterectomy, and so had gone into early menopause and was really, really struggling with the night sweats and she found it really, really useful as a tea for her night sweats. Um, a word of caution though, it's advised that one shouldn't rely on the tea for more than about three months before taking a break from it. If in doubt, any, any of these things with herbs, if in doubt, speak to an, a naturopath. Obviously it's great when things work, but if using them long term is going to build up some level of toxicity, we need to be really mindful of that. It is going to look a bit bare and a bit like a load of sticks, but like I say, it bounces back so amazingly well. It's worth just getting stuck in and doing it. With the rosemary, 
I will do similar. Um, it does need really quite a hard cutting back. Uh, let me just take a sprig as an example. So with the rosemary, I probably will hang this as bunches of stalks. Again, at home to dry because it's, it's just a bit warmer and drier at home than it is down here at the moment. I absolutely love rosemary for my baths. So all I do is I kind of, I have a stalk and I go strip the leaves off, give them a slight pounding with the pestle and water just to break them up a little bit and help release their oils. And then either straight into the bath or in a little muslin bag hanging from the, uh, the tap as you run the bath. And it's really, really lovely for aches and pains. It's supposed to be particularly good for rheumatism. I don't have rheumatism, I have arthritis. But either way, I find it incredibly soothing in the bath. You can also make a hair rinse from it. So after you've um, just make it up like a pot of tea, uh, and then after you've washed your hair, use it to have a rinse through. It's supposed to be particularly good for grey hair. I haven't got grey hair, so I haven't tried it. Well, I've got a few grey hairs coming. You know, I've lived. <laughs> Just a few on my temples. But yeah, if you've tried it for your grey hair, let me know how successful it was for you. Oh, this is another one of those wonderfully mindful jobs. I've just been stuck in the moment. Oh yes, lovely. <laughs> I'm sitting with my head <laughs> right in the rosemary and it's just, it's so delicious. I think the older I get, the wiser I get in some ways, not in all ways, but I think one of the things I've definitely become wise about is just going more slowly in the garden, just really, really making the most of each moment, allowing myself to be completely in the moment of whatever I'm doing. I mean, I still have my list. I still have, you know, that sort of an idea of what I'd like to get done each day. But I'm less bothered these days if I don't get it all done. Just do it another day. And what I'm definitely better at these days is when I'm doing a job, like now, I'm doing this job. I'm not thinking about the next job or the next three jobs. It's taken me quite a while to learn that. <laughs> but I tell you what, now that I've learned it, I don't half enjoy that pleasure of it. Hey Poppy! Right on cue, someone else who likes going slowly and having pleasure moments. I'm leaving quite a bit on this side of the rosemary where it's starting to flower because these flowers do a fantastic um, early source of food for any bees emerging. And they're starting to. Wonderful little signs of life all over the garden at the moment. Right, I'm just going to immerse myself in this pleasure while you all go off and do something else. Oh, delicious. I've noticed that my verbena is, whoopsie, that's my job, next job. Yeah, the verbena is just starting to sprout again here and here, up there. So it's time to take off last year's growth to make room for this year's. Oh, I 
a bit of string. Just while I'm in this corner, I can see my um, bulbs are starting to show. Never had spring bulbs on the plot before. That's rather exciting. Yay! I think it looks like this one here and here. They look like tulips to me. That's probably that little handful of tulips that my mum gave me because for some unknown reason she's not a fan of tulips. Who's not a fan of tulips? That's mad. Well, my mum is not a fan. <coughs> the poached egg plant has gone mad. This was just a handful of seeds from one of my neighbours that I scratched into the ground. And another job to do is look at the ridiculous angle my signpost is at. It's just so... There you go, that'll give you a better idea. <laughs> okay, that obviously needs, I don't know, some sort of... And maybe I can get a wedge down there somewhere, but, but yeah, that's where it should be. That's where it currently is. Okay, I can put that little job on the list. What do you think, Poppy? Should we put that job on the list? I think she's got coddles on the list and that's it. Just while I'm on the subject of bulbs, spring bulbs, flowers, I want to just quickly show you my neighbour Catherine's Crocuses are starting to come up. Isn't that a lovely sight? Just these wee bits of colour. Beautiful. Let's have a closer look. Oh, Poppy's come to help me have a look too. My little ever shadow. What a happy sight that is. I love the purple ones with their bright orange stamens. They're just audacious, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous. What do you think, Poppy? And then the beautiful splash of the yellow ones. I always think the sight of these spring bulbs is just, I don't know, it's an indicator to be hopeful. It's almost saying, yes. We can be hopeful again. There will be spring again. Oh, look at these little, aren't they? Look at the color of those, isn't that beautiful? Well, that's intense. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Like little moments of sunshine, even on a gray day. Beautiful. Well, the garden is definitely beginning to wake up and even the sun is trying to come out and this morning I was just having a poke around and I found this little sign of life very close to my now faded sweet Sicily label so I'm super excited to wonder whether that is in fact a sweet Sicily I did pop a few bulbs in here, which I didn't expect anything from because they were very old and a bit mushy. I don't think it's one of those because do you see all the little black um, markers? That's where I put the bulbs. So hopefully this is the sweet Sicily returning. Yay. And also look, the first of the salads are germinating. All of them are up. So that's Rocket on the left um, with the yellow label. Then some random salad leaves. And then right in the far end, oh sorry, is spinach and they're coming up too. And can you see from there? Look how many sweet peas are coming up now. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Actually, let me just take you over here because I want to show you something else that's starting to sprout. I'm going to step onto my path. Oh, that's a big step. Use the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Let me show you from this side to see better. 
yeah lots and lots and then the ones that are empty at the far end that's the ones I just sowed a couple of days ago that I left to soak for a few days but hurrah for having my own sweet peas this year yay and I think I'm going to have a couple that I can give to my neighbour Sheena who gave me a couple last year that will be really really lovely now the other day I was having a bit of a tidy up of cabbage leaves um, well, her brassica leaves. Where did I see it? We're going on the hunt now. Uh, yeah, so all the sort of dying yellowing ones I've taken off to fill up, or well, start filling my bean trenches. And whilst I was at it, I noticed my first purple sprouting broccoli sprouts are coming. Actually, <sighs> look at that. Isn't that a happy sight? <laughs> they look like little berries at the moment. Oh, I can't wait to get my chops around those. This is why I love purple sprouting broccoli. It's because just when all the other brassicas are finishing, and you just don't want to say goodbye to that gorgeous brassica taste, all of this is coming. All of this. So obviously I'll have the sprouts, but I'll have the leaves too, which will be absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Yum, 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 yum. Oh, we need to fill the bird feeders. And over here, where I shredded all the yellowing leaves, as you can see, they now start to fill my bean trenches. Well, hopefully that will give all my beans a gorgeous feed over the summer and hold a bit more moisture to keep them happy. Colour of this green of the grass and the sunlight today. Oh, just doesn't it make your heart sing and make you want to skip down the road? I wish my knees were fitter because seriously, I would skip, skip with this beautiful light that's now suddenly appearing in my last of my chard. Also looking gorgeous in the light. I had to harvest a load of it from here. A couple of days ago when I was doing the bean trenches. Oh, oh yes, a bit of light, a bit of brightness, it just makes everything feel right again, doesn't it? Oh yes, happy, happy days. I'm trying to think what I'm supposed to be doing next. I kind of don't care. I think I might just sit and enjoy this light for a moment. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. The sun is trying its hardest. What a pretty morning again. And all the birds. It's so lovely. Yeah, I know there's an aeroplane too. <sighs> so look, that kind of pruning of the sage and rosemary, it takes so long. <laughs> it's probably I probably spent an hour doing that this morning. But possibly more actually. Time has whizzed. But that's okay. In fact, it's good. It's really good. I find these days I really, really struggle to do a full day in the garden like I might have been doing two or three years ago. You know, two, three years ago when I was working three or four days a week, doing a day with my great aunt at least. I sometimes only had one day or two days in the garden and I generally do eight 10 hours even there's no way I can do that anymore it just hurts too much but actually in some ways I prefer if I can when I can it's not always possible but most days I prefer to come here for two or three hours in the morning it just sets me up so well for the rest of the day I do this I go home and I work I do whatever the other work is I need to do whether it's sewing or the shop or you know whatever it is it just sets me up so well and like I was saying when I was doing the um, the pruning I really have learned to appreciate the benefit of going a bit more slowly I find I'm actually getting more done by going slowly it's funny isn't it 
but there we go anyway it's it's just a little catch up today i wanted to share some of this brightness with you again today i didn't think we were going to have actual sunshine oh look right on cue two magpies have just landed two for joy how perfect <sighs> la vita è bella it really is yeah i didn't think we we're actually going to have real sunshine today i thought it was just going to be the brightness so it's lovely that it has gotten a bit more sunny now i hope those of you with snow are hanging in there it's still really early in the year we've a long way to go yet before sowing and doing anything out there with the soil just making the most of these beautiful days to do some of those little jobs that quite often we feel we don't have time for I'm making time for them and setting myself up right for the rest of the day right well on that note I need to go and get on with the rest of my day what time is it I don't know it must be about 10 o'clock by now so oh no what time do I get down here about half eight half nine half ten it's probably about half ten you don't need to know oh <laughs> it's actually ten past eleven been here longer than I thought I need to skedaddle so have a wonderful day whatever you're up to and whoever you're getting up to it with I will see you really soon I hope in the meantime cheerio everyone and take care of yourselves